Hello and welcome back to this new video on functions for the purposes of DH in Python. In the last videos, we've looked at two key components or key concepts behind programming, and that is a conditional statement and a for loop. Now, both of these are essential for understanding how programs work and developing your own kind of tools using Python. In this video, though, we're going to be talking about the cornerstone behind programming, and that is a function. Believe it or not, you've interacted with functions already in this series. Uh, you just haven't realized it yet. And we're also going to talk about kind of something that's similar to a function, but a little bit different that we're going to explore in more detail in the next video, and that's method. Uh, we've worked with both of these. So let's start with a function. What is a function? Well, a function is anything that takes some kind of an input and in a lot of cases, not all, but will return some kind of output for the user. It's a chunk of text that uh, uh, performs a block of code that you're going to need and it will allow for you to re perform it repeatedly without having to uh, write new code to perform the same task. This will make a lot more sense as we kind of progress through this video. So let's start off by how we actually form a function in Python. So what we do to form a function in Python is we simply write def, def, all lowercase, and we give that function, this creates the function, we give it some kind of a name. So let's just call this one names. And then what we have to do is we have to do an open and a close bracket. And then we have to do, and this is important, a colon. And if you remember from our last video on functions, or sorry, on loops, this is going to allow us to hit enter and indent in Python. And this right here is known as white space, or the area that is before the next line of code that is indented. And this is what makes Python nice and easy to read is the fact that white space and indentation is mandatory, unlike in C and JavaScript. So what do we do in here? Well, in this area, we perform some kind of task. So if you have a function that doesn't do anything, your Python script won't run. You always have to have something in a function for your script to run. So if I were to run this right now, you'll see that it works. If I get rid of this pass operator, we get a syntax error. So whenever you make a function, always make sure that you have something. And if you've got a function just sitting there, just write the word pass in and everything's going to work fine. But oftentimes we don't want to just create an empty, useless function. We want it to do something. So how do we make sure that it does something? Well, we give it what are known as arguments. So we're going to take our variables. So what we're going to do is we're going to give it some kind of an input and we're going to want it to return some kind of output. Now you're not going to ever really name your input input and your output output. You're going to oftentimes name these something different that makes sense to whatever's being processed in your code. But for right now, for the purposes of this video, we're going to just call them input and output so you can kind of see what's happening. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the input of something and we're going to transform it somehow. So let's say we simply want to take the input and we're, let's say we're thinking that it's going to be a string. So we're going to take the output and make it equal to input plus, let's give it a space, is cool. <laughs> so now what I can do is I can call that function in Python, and I'm going to explain what's happening in just a second. So I can say, uh, let's just do something fun. Let's say names, and let's say Billy. And you'll notice nothing's happened. It's just simply run. And that's because I've just simply called a function that doesn't do anything. What you don't see happening right now is that I am opening this function and it's being processed. It is going in and there is an object being made and there's an output being given that is actually this phrase. But nothing actually happens. What I need to do is I need to create a new object and make it equal to whatever I am being processing. And now I can print off name, and you'll see that I have this output, Billy is cool. That's fantastic. 
So what we've done here is we have created an object that has been processed by our function and returned an output of that process. So when I said earlier in this video that you've actually worked with functions in the past, you just haven't realized it, think about what you've done that you've formed similarly to this. And that's a function. Functions are called when you have some kind of task that you want to do and you are telling Python what you want to be passed to that task. So why are functions useful? Imagine that I had a chunk of names in a list. Uh, we're going to call it list names. Let's say I've got Ross. You're again going to see Rachel. All right, I got to fix this. This is going to bother me. There we go. Monica. Joey. I'm going to go with Phoebe here and Ford Chandler coming in last. All right. So why is a function useful? Well, it allows for me to perform a task repeatedly without writing a bunch of new code. So if I wanted to create a for loop for name in list names, I want to new is going to be equal to uh, names. I'm calling the function here. And I'm going to simply say name. What do you think is going to happen if I do print new? Take a moment, pause the video, look at what's happening, and take a guess as to what you think will happen. And hit play and come on back. Okay, I'm going to run the code now. If you said this, then you'd be right. Because all we've done here now is we've used three lines of code that would have taken... I don't know, probably a few extra lines, but I don't have to do this ever again. So when you use a function, it's when you are trying to create polished, formal code that allows for you to reduce the amount of times you have to copy and paste a task. This is going to be very useful. But how can we optimize this even more? So let's say we had other names, and I had Billy... Cindy, Bob, Christy. Now, now in order to iterate across this list, I've got to copy and paste this down here and just simply change that to that. And I can do both. I can kind of iterate through both lists. Well, what if I didn't want to have to do that? What if I knew that every time I was working with some kind of input, it was always going to be a list? How could I make sure that that was able to not be repeated every time. Well, what I can do is I can just simply do this. Output is going to be equal to a new list. And get rid of that. I can go ahead new is going to be equal to name input and i'm going to explain what's happening in just a second we're going to get rid of that okay let me make sure i've got this all right output dot append i'm going to say new okay so let's delete all of this or just comment that out we don't really care about that okay so what we are expecting an input to be is a list. And what we're going to do is we're going to read that list in now, and we're going to process it in a for loop. We're going to say that for name and input, so it's going to iterate across that list, new is equal to name plus is cool, just like we saw before. And it's going to append, this is a method, by the way, it's going to append the output list and it's going to input it, input it, append it with this new formatted text, and it's going to return an output. Why is this useful now? Well, I can do this now. New list is going to be equal to list name. Ooh. Names, list names. And now I can print off new list. 
And now you see that I've got all of these things formatted that way and less lines of code. And if I need it to do this twice uh, for this other names, you can see I've drastically reduced what was, I don't know, six lines of code down to simply uh, four. But you can see why this is useful. This will allow you to do this. But what happens now if I were to pass in, let's just say Jeff is going to be equal to Jeff, and not, or let's just say name. There we go. Uh, what if I were to pass in simply name? Print off new list. Oh. I get this. This is a bad output. I get J is cool, E is cool, F is cool, and F is cool. What has happened here? Well, what's happened is this input was expecting a list. So when it got a string, instead of inputting across a uh, string and seeing that it's only one person, it's iterated across each letter of the string. That's bad practice. We don't want that. This is not a good output. We want to only see Jeff is cool. So how can we account for this? Well, we can do some cool stuff. So what I can do, and this is good practice, is I can set up a way to make sure that that bug doesn't manifest itself. How can I do that? Well, I can make sure that the user has inputted the expected data. So I can simply use a conditional statement. If type, and this is going to check, check and see the type of object that is happening, if type and tell it what you want to look at. Input is list. And we can move all of this and we can use the tab button and indent that over. So if type is list, do all this. And we can say else. So if it's not, print off input data is not a list. And this will tell the user, oh, well, the input data isn't a list. Oh, I should have put Jeff like that. And now Jeff is cool comes out as a list. So this is why functions are useful. And these are kind of the necessary building blocks of a function. You've got some kind of input data. Usually you don't always have to. You've got that input data being uh, somehow manipulated in the function. And whatever you've done to manipulate it, you're going to output it. Now, that's just one type of function. Sometimes you're going to want to use a function that, uh, let's just comment this out. I'll leave it there so you can kind of see it if you need to scroll back up in the video. Or not scroll back up, uh, but look at it still. So I'm going to comment all of this out, actually. I'm just going to scroll down and start on a new line down here. So what if I wanted a function that just um, did something silly? Um, Let's make a function called annoying. <laughs> and this function is not going to take any arguments. And what it's going to do is every time you do it, it's going to say for um, integer in, uh, let's say, range 10, print off annoying. So now, if I run this, nothing's going to happen. And that's because you have to call your function. So if I simply call it, I type it annoying, and I open and close parentheses to let Python know that I am just writing or calling the function, and I run it, and you see that it's printed off annoying 10 times. So this is how you can use a function without any argument. So what's the time that you might actually want to do that? Well, if you are writing a script where you need to perform a certain task that doesn't require uh, an input being manipulated and doesn't really need an output, then you're going to use this. And believe it or not, this is going to be something that you do quite often. So that's how you pass or create a uh, function with no arguments and no return output. So let's talk about a couple different things. We can do some pretty cool stuff with functions. So let's say for whatever reason, I've got a function and I need to do something, let's just say, uh, uh, change. So what we're going to do is we're going to expect an input of two arguments. 
we're going to expect name and age. And what we're going to do is we are going to print off. Let's just do something simple. Let's print off name. We're going to use that formatted string that we saw earlier is uh, we're going to say age. So uh, in this scenario, we're going to say name is equal to, and we're just going to create a list. We're going to do something a little different in a second. So we're going to make a list, and this is going to be Jeff, and we're going to say 22. So here's what's a lot of fun. We can pass, we can say change, and we can pass in an asterisk and say name. And what's going to happen here? is it's going to pass in this data here into there and fill in each part of this list into each part of or each of these arguments. So we can have a multi, there you go, you see the out, uh, you see it work. You see the, uh, the output not actually occurring, but you see the input going in and being printed off just like we wanted to see. So what we have here is the ability to pass in two arguments referenced by a list with using an asterisk. If, however, name was not like that, rather it were a dictionary where we had, I'm just going to rewrite this, a key of name, which was equal to Jeff, and a key of age, which was equal to 22, we could do something even cooler. Now, I'm going to make a deliberate mistake right now. If I were to run this, it's going to take the, sorry, the keys of name and age. If, however, I want to pass the values, Jeff and 22, I can pass both of them to the or through the function by uh, using a double asterisk here. So this is the way you can process uh, a list and a dictionary more efficiently through a function. But here's a po an important caveat. If I were to change this to person, I'm going to get a type error. When you create a function in a dictionary that is designed to go into that function, make sure that the key and the argument are the same. If not, you're going to have that kind of an error. So that's one way in which you can kind of pass uh, a lot of information into a function with one line of code. Let's talk about a couple other things that we need to think about when making our functions. So we're going to comment this out. So we're going to talk about arbitrary arguments with an asterisk. What's an arbitrary argument? Well, let's go back to this function. And we're just going to have an asterisk and name. And we're going to say print off name. So in order for this function to run, I've got to actually have it do something. An arbitrary argument, let me show you what I'm talking about. So if I were to try to run this function and I've got an argument here and I haven't passed that argument, I'm going to get a, uh, a type error. Uh, it's requiring one argument name. By using an asterisk, I'm actually creating an optional argument. It's an arbitrary argument is the technical term. But the asterisk allows for me to have the function still run even if I haven't passed anything. So that's called an optional argument or arbitrary argument by simply adding that asterisk. If not, I'd have to have, let's say Jeff. I don't know why I keep on using Jeff here. Uh, so we got Jeff there. If we had this here, you'd see that it would still work and it's being passed in as a tuple. Um, but we'll talk about that in a later video. Uh, the other thing that we can do is, a, um, is to give a default one. So if I were to do this, uh, you'd see that uh, the program would still run effectively and it would have a default argument of Cindy. Um, if, however, I were to pass in the name Jeff, you see that uh, it replaces the default argument with whatever you want to see. So that's how you can kind of create a default argument to make sure that your function runs. Uh, you're oftentimes going to want to do this when you are working with a um, unknown variable that you're almost always going to use. You'll drop it in there. You'll see me do that in a lot of my videos. Uh, and then you can kind of change it if you need to for a very specific instance. That's how you kind of create a default 
uh, variable that your our argument that you can always have. Um, so that's another type of argument that you can pass. Overall, though, um, I don't want to go on too much longer. I've given you the basic building blocks of what a function is, how it works. Just understand that a function is a block of code in Python that you know you're going to have to repeat a lot. Um, it is a it does a couple different things. It can take an input and it can process that input and give some kind of an output, or it can just simply do a repetitive task. Overall, these are the purposes of functions and it's what good code looks like. Oftentimes when I'm developing code, I will write a whole bunch of code. And then what I'll do is I'll go back and I'll start thinking about, okay, let's break this down. How can I make this look nicer? And I'll start creating what are known as polished uh, kind of final draft functions that are tested and debugged. That's going to be it for this video, though. Um, if you do have a chance, check out pythonhumanities.com. And if we bring it up over here, you can see that it's underneath uh, three, part three, interacting with data. Go down to lesson number 10, and you'll see Python functions. You got the video. You can kind of go through and kind of read what we talked about in here, and you can test your knowledge on a coding exercise. And you can just kind of test yourself very basically. I'd give it a go, and if you get stuck, as always, you can use the cheat sheet and kind of check your answers. That's going to be it for this video, though. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe down below and visit us at pythonhumanities.com.